You are listening to 60 Second Civics from the Center for Civic Education. I'm Mark Gage. Article 2 of the Constitution places the executive power, the powers of the executive branch of government, in the President of the United States. Unlike Article 1, which gives Congress those powers herein granted, Article 2 does not define executive power. The Constitution lists some of the President's powers, but those listed have never been thought to be the President's only powers. The listed powers include commanding the Army and Navy as Commander-in-Chief, heading the Cabinet and Executive Departments, and granting reprieves and pardons. A President's constitutional powers also include making treaties, subject to the advice and consent of the Senate, as well as nominating ambassadors, public ministers, consuls, and judges of the Supreme Court and other federal courts. Presidents have the power to recommend legislation to Congress, review legislation passed by Congress, and return bills to which he or she objects. Presidents are also the nation's chief diplomat. They receive ambassadors and other public ministers. The Constitution further directs the president to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. It also requires the president to take an oath that includes a promise to faithfully execute the office of president and preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Presidents have asserted many reasons to justify a broad definition of executive powers, particularly in times of national emergency, such as the Great Depression and war. The Constitution has proven flexible enough to adapt to changing understandings of presidential power. That's all for today's podcast, 60 Second Civics, where civic education only takes a minute. <laughs>